All right, I'm going to be demonstrating some of the uh, protocol that I use for uh, neurogenic thoracic or just thoracic outlet syndrome in general. Um, and so this is, you know, techniques you can use for other stuff as well, but uh, this is a common one that I do, uh, notably when they have an anterior scaling, anterior middle scaling variant of a uh, neurogenic thoracic outlet that I like to do. Uh, so this one, we really want to make sure that we're stretching out the scaling. So when he's just laying here like this, uh, the scalings aren't too stretched. So actually, I'm going to have you sit up for a second. I'm going to bundle this pillow up over here. Okay, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to tuck that underneath your arm right here. That was the pillow. And uh, we're just going to let this arm just kind of hang down over this way here. And then this arm right back over here, I want you to kind of tuck it behind yourself right over here. Um, and that helps just kind of depress the scapula a little bit so that you know, we're also kind of getting a little bit of extra tension on that levator scap right over here. So as I kind of bring him over here and then take him, myself on the clavicle and then the first rib area right here really helps, you know, you can see the scaling muscles kind of pop out a lot better right over here. Now, as I'm doing this, I want him to be able to hear my instructions. So I make sure I'm not covering up the ear, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be kind of having a, a V right over the ear here. I'm keeping some tension right over here. Do you feel a good stretch on the scaling muscles right over here? Okay, and then I'm gonna do some muscle energy to start. So I have you go ahead and lift your head up against me here, just gently, okay? Enough that he's engaging those muscles. You should be able to, able to see them kind of pop and relax. And I can stretch them a little bit further over there. Then what I'm gonna have you do is um, shrug your shoulder up a little bit against me here. Perfect. Again, no winner. And relax, okay? And then we're gonna do both at the same time. And relax. Okay, and so that's a good way to kind of just do a little bit of muscle energy. Now, sometimes I'll do some myofascial release if I feel uh, there's a big myofascial restriction kind of point within here. Again, making sure that we're not pushing on any kind of uh, uh, vasculature. Uh, so make sure you don't feel a palpable pulse underneath your finger, but I will just kind of stack down to the myofascial plane on that scaling, and then I can stack it however I need to. Again, looking into flexion, extension, side bending, rotation, anything that you need to just to kind of get some myofascial uh, release on that to be able to you know, get that to calm itself down. Okay, so I was demonstrating how to do fascial distortion model on the anterior scaling right over here. And so I've already got them kind of pushed down over here, already done a little bit of muscle energy, maybe some myofascial over here. What I like to do is, again, that scaling is going to be coursing down, you know, from the uh, mastoid process down over into this direction over here. So I can kind of run my finger down that scaling, my thumb, just kind of going down this way here all the way until we can kind of connect it onto that rib. And sometimes that's also very helpful for detecting if, you know, if we're actively doing it on a patient and they're like, ooh, that really feels like that's releasing that spot that's kind of bothering me. That's helpful for us just kind of saying, okay, seems like there's a good part of the anterior scaling variant that's, you know, kind of contributing towards your symptoms over here. Okay, and so that's the fascial distortion thing to be able to kind of work on that anterior scaling variant.